Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. Cool. Let's add like an effect so that it trails behind some glowy stuff as it moves. Um, so I'll just start over here with a painting. So we've got these circles that are yellow, and I'll just draw some like lines. Let's actually have them. Uh, I'll use the draw flex tool, the pencil tool. As I pull more on the trigger, it gets bigger, and then less on the trigger, and it gets thinner. So now I can kind of have a large line and become smaller as it goes up. Uh, cool. And then I'll animate that with the with the animation tab. And you see all the flex kind of following the stroke that I made. And then if we lower the flex density, now it's like just little particles sort of thing. And then we can go and have it duplicate inside sphere and around cylinder. And it's like this pulsing thing. Um, time offset. If we have zero time offset, they're all exactly in the same time. If we have maximum time offset, it, it's like a, a cloud of dots happening. Give it some, so they're all kind of flat to this dire direction. But if we give it some ruffle, they'll kind of wiggle as well. Maybe some uh, impasto. And then some glow. Ooh. Okay. And then, uh, and finally, we want to add Jet Trail. So if I turn Jet Trail off first, I can use an action recorder and just like move it around. And this way, the animation is kind of locked to wherever the painting is. But if we turn on Jet Trail, then it's like leaving jet trails of those strokes animating, which is really cool. So that's what we want. And we'll put that, we'll have it less spread out actually. So less spread and then put it in here and just have it around the coin. And we'll turn that on in this timeline. So normally it will be off. And we use a keyframe to be to turn it on while we're chasing. And I'll get a different colour so we can tell them apart. Tell you what, I'll turn off these things. Oh. And then it won't um, ding. Right. There we go. And now it's following and it went to the faster speed and it would like ding but we've taken that out so let's add that back yay so that's pretty cool yeah and a suggestion from chat was to fade this in so instead of instead of it just being suddenly on uh, which this does we can fade it in so this means this will have more and more power over time so like low power and then high power and that will affect the opacity. So when it has, when it's powered to a non-zero amount, it will be shown, but it will be shown at a low opacity. And then as it goes up, it will be shown at a normal opacity. So maybe I'll actually have that quite quick like that. Yay, that's not too bad. Cool. So if I just uh, copy this around a bit, Yeah, I think that works pretty well. This isn't going to be there. That's not going to be there. Let's go back to the scene. My updates. Cool. Something else we could do is instead of having it to just go to the, like, chest of the character or whatever have it go to a specific point on the character so um i'll give this uh i'll make a new tag actually and make sure it's scoped in here 
and then I'll put it on one of the hands. So I'll scale it down. And surface snap it. I'm just holding L1 while holding the gadget and then hover over a sculpt. And now I can snap it to the surface of the sculpt. And put the gizmo at the hand as well. So I'll give it a new name of hand. And I'll make it follow to the hand. So up and down the D-pad to go to the other tag name. Like that. And now it should go straight to the hand instead of the chest of the character. Oh. So it's kind of hard to tell that that's what's happening, but it is. But what then what we can do is say, if there's a coin coming to the hand and it's close enough, let's like pose the hand as if it's catching it. So this needs to, to be detectable that it's um, on its way to the hand. So in this timeline, I'll have a tag. So coin to hand like that. And make sure that's positioned nicely in the coin. And then this will detect that happening. So we'll have a trigger zone looking for a tag called uh, coin to hand. And if we're like in this range, uh, let's say, then we will animate the hand to be up. So we've got a keyframe and I'm just going to move that hand with R2. So that will just power that animation to put the hand to the side. If there's a coin near it and see it kind of pop out to the side when it catches it. Uh, let's have a few more so that we can play around with it better. Okay, and I'll put the uh, oh, I'll put the gizmo of the tag above the hand, so we can. It looks like we're catching it on the top of our hand. Um, and what we can also do is make it so that as it gets closer, it's more in that um, position. So uh, if we make that a little smaller, and then so you can make the zone smaller and bigger with R two, and if you hold L one while doing R two then that's like a fall off zone. So out here, it'll have a lower signal coming out of it. And in here, it'll have a higher signal, which means it will be more or less like locking it into that position. Uh, so that could look cool. So it kind of now animates a bit to kind of catch them. Like that. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.